Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Okay, so I just saw something on YouTube. Is it one of those YouTube shorts? It was talking about the seven uh, things that successful people never do. And one of them was stop blaming, take responsibility. Now, I just watched a series of YouTube videos that would say, hey, well, just be happy or just be this or that. And not a single one of them said, okay, now here's how you do it. And last night I saw another one. It was a spiritual one or, or a healing one. And it was talking about how, well, what you got to do is you got to have, you know, uh, give, give your, that part of you space, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, that's absolutely true. But no one, unless you've been trained in this, has a freaking clue. What, is the, what does that mean? How do you do that? So I remember a long time ago, I was in my probably, I was probably 20 years old, maybe 19. I don't remember how old I was. I was really young. And I just happened to be in a bookstore look in the personal development section. I was talking to someone like, well, you know what your problem is? All you got to do is just be happy. And I looked at this person. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Pff, okay. And then there was another time when someone said, you know what your problem is? You got to make more money. See, all you got to do is just be rich. Oh, pff, well, pff, didn't even cross my mind. All I got to do is make more money, be rich. Oh, okay. Now, then came along a man called Tony Robbins, uh, Robbins Research International, etc. And he was all about the how. And lo and behold, my life started changing. And then I got into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, because it's all about, well, here's how you become happy. This is what you're doing to frustrate yourself. This is what you're doing to depress yourself. And here's how you reverse that. And here's how you become happy. And I was like, oh, okay. And so all of a sudden life began to change and it became like, oh, there's act these are actual uh, processes or steps that people are taking either consciously or most people on an unconscious level. This is why some people are happy and this is why some people are crappy. So I fell in love with the house. So there's four people. There's the what people, meaning what's going on. And then there's the people like, well, why are we doing this? Okay. And then there's the there how people. Well, how do I do this? Okay. And then there's the then there's the what if people. These are generally not always, but this is definitely a, a, something that narcissists do. This does not make you a narcissist if you do this. But these are the people like well, what if this? What if that? They're always thinking of the worst case scenario. What if this? What if that? Even things that have don't apply at all. So there's four people, four categories, and you generally fall into one of those four. So what are we doing here at MGK International? What is this whole, you know, the Church of Awesome? What is it all about? It's about changing your life. It's about learning how, the third step, how to take steps and how to change your life. Obviously, I can do this much, much faster, much easier in person, and it's a much more powerful experience. So if you come to the trainings, the workshops, or if you come to the one-on-one -on -one coachings, yes, I can absolutely help you change your life for sure. Because at that point, I can show you how, I can tell you how, I can get you to do the how and understand the how on a much, much deeper level. So one of the things that I have found is actually understanding the teachings. And one of my biggest frustrations walking through life is listening to these people who have these YouTube channels or these shorts or social media sites, and they have no idea what they're talking about. They literally, number one, have no idea what they're talking about. Number two, they don't know why they're talking about it. Number three, most importantly, they have no clue that there is a how. So they spout off really cool phrases and, you know, even like, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And, and that was my last video last night. I'm going to go over that a little bit more in this one. But that is such a huge misunderstanding uh, when it's translated into the English language. It's literally reversed. Like, that's not the original teaching. That doesn't, it's not even close to the actual t original translation of the teaching. So they spout off a lot of like really cool phrases that everyone's heard for the last 20, 30, 50, 100, 200,000 years, etc. 
and they're stuck up in their head they can't get out they can't move forward in life like nothing changes they're just the same person then they're using beer alcohol and caffeine to mask their their emptiness to mask their unhappiness etc and you're just like and so for someone like me like like hey you can you can actually change you can actually change the way you are inside And then there's the people like, oh, this is just my lot in life. I'm like, what are you talking about? How is this your lot in life? Well, I was just born into this kind of family. We're poor and this is just the way life is, blah, blah, blah. And th th you know what it is? It's laziness. And that's, let's just call it what it is. Because they like, it's really, they like to use it as an excuse of, oh, well, I was just born this way. Meaning, therefore, I don't have to lift a finger. I don't have to get off my lazy butt and educate my mind or, or develop and practice techniques. Because that's one of the things that when it comes to working with me, you're going to have to practice things until you become fluent at them. And most of the techniques in this, they're not that hard. They're really not. It might take you three or four weeks of practice and boom. Also, now you can do this. Now you move on to the next technique and you begin to develop that. And it's like, wow, things are starting to shift. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. So in this quick short, it was saying number one. So these are the seven things that successful people never do. So one was stop complaining. You know, stop, stop complaining about things. Because complaining never fixes anything. It just keeps you stuck. Instead, start looking for solutions, okay? Guess what? I'm an NLP trainer, master hypnotherapist. I'm a personal development coach. This is what I specialize in. This is what I have mastered. Finding solutions. There's so many. You know, I had a guy call me up. It was about three months ago when I was really deep into the narcissist videos. And he had a real problem. He worked, uh, not worked for, was one of the top, oh God, I think investors, I can't remember, but he was at the top, like one of the top four or five. And they were having major, major problems in this corporation. This was a huge corporation. And, th and in one session, I helped him find a solution by doing a series of question patterns that I learned from uh, an NLP training I took years ago from John Overdurf. And I just like, oh, all we got to do is pop him out of the problems. See, when you, okay. This is why I keep saying you need to pop out of the problem because you you cannot solve the problem on the level of the problem. So if you're down inside stuck in the problem, well, that's all you're going to get is more problems. But if we can pop you up and out, now it's like, it's like climbing up a mountain and now you're looking down on the problem. Number one, the problem seems a lot smaller to your brain. And now that you've opened up and expanded, you can see all the options and possibilities around the problem and boom, you find your solution. Now I'm going to actually walk you through a very, very basic technique. Okay. I'm just going to give you one, but first here's, okay, here's something that I purposely do. I noticed whenever I go up on top of buildings, tall buildings, or if I go up like, okay, where I live, there's a uh, pathway that goes up the side of this, I wouldn't say mountain, but it's a uh, rolling hills. It's pretty tall. It's pretty far up there. So when I look down on the city and I see Highway 101 and all the on-ramps and off-ramps and you see the uh, streets going beneath the overpass, it looks like it's so small, it looks like ants or it looks like uh, your blood rushing through your veins. And one day it dawned, I'm like, wow, this is literally like, like a series of arteries and veins where blood is or information is just passing through. And that's what it all is about. So one thing I noticed is when I go up to high heights like that, all of a sudden my problems seem to disappear and I start coming up with solutions. Like it's not like I'm just consciously doing this. It's just like somewhere along the path I'm up there and I'll hang out there for about 10, 15, 20 minutes and I'm looking on down on both sides of this mountain. Not quite a mountain, but it's pretty big. And I can look down on both sides from my, I can see all the way across the bay, all the way over to Oakland and Emeryville, even to Concord and Walnut Creek. So that's, that's, that's like an hour drive to get over there. Maybe let's see. Yeah, probably 45 minutes without traffic. And so all I notice is I just start feeling better. And my, here's what happens. Your neurology begins to loosen up instead of being stuck and very tight and looking down this one stream of consciousness or this, think of it as nerves. Like you're only in this one line of, an, of one nerve. Whereas now you expand open and you connect to hundreds of thousands 
of neurological connections that go to different possibilities and now you're opened up to the possibilities and now you find solutions easily in fact your unconscious mind does it for you so I make that a fairly regular thing to go if I'm in San Francisco there's this one building that goes way up so I take the elevator all the way up and then I'll just sit there at the top and I'll look out the windows and I'll just ponder and I'll let my mind kind of float and go away All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of a problem that you're having right now. I don't care what it is. I don't care. Just I want, it could be frustration. It could be lack of money. It could be fear. It could, I don't care what it is. Like you're having a problem with something. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds and I'll let you come up with something. Um, I'll wait about eight seconds. Okay, if you need to, you can uh, stop this and then come back to it. So just think of a problem. It doesn't have to be like the most important thing, but just think something so you can go through this exercise. I'm actually going to give you two. See, this is all about shifting your reality into a reality that you like and that you want. Now, here's the deal. Just like climbing up the mountain, you might just get a sense of relaxation. You might just get a sense of peace and... And all your worries just go away, and the the answer may actually act, <clears throat> excuse me, the answer may actually pop up a few minutes later, or maybe even a few hours later. So generally, there's two things that help me to clear my mind. And uh, if I have a problem, and I'm worrying, 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 worrying. I start cleaning. If I start to clean, I kind of get caught up in this thing. And here's what it does: it distracts you. It distracts your conscious mind from your problems. In other words, I, when I say conscious, I don't mean consciousness. That's your unconscious mind, okay? But I mean like your ego. So all of a sudden, you're not stuck on the problem. Now you're cleaning this and you're cleaning the dishes or cleaning the walls or whatever you're cleaning. And what this does is it allows your unconscious mind to mull through the problem and to look at it from different perspectives in different directions. And that's a really, really good thing. See, the reason why you get stuck on problems is literally like you go all the way down that V or that, that, uh, that V that I keep talking about. And now you get stuck at the tip inside the V and there's nowhere to go. So what you need to do is pop all the way up and all the way out. Now you have all this freedom. And so when you're cleaning and doing dishes or going on a hike and going up a mountain, it takes you out of the tip of the V and now you get unstuck. And now what happens, it allows your unconscious mind to think on its own, to do its natural, normal, healthy process without you getting in the way. Believe it or not, another way to expand into your more expansive neurology versus being down this one narrow line is brush your hair, brush your body with the bristles of a brush, brush your legs. In other ways, get a massage, a deep tissue massage. What this does is it pops you out of that one line of uh, consciousness, that one sense of uh, those, that one line of nerves or one nerve system and pops you out to tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of, of neurology connections. And all of a sudden you have all these options and possibilities and you're like, like, what was I so worried about? So, if you know the story of Helen Keller, she if I understand, she was basically a mute, okay? Now, when I was a kid, now, it's been a long time. I think it was like in third, fourth, or fifth grade, we had to read the story about it. Now, later on in therapy, one, and so she was a mute. She couldn't really connect with people, et cetera. She was kind of stuck inside, we'll say. What most people don't know, she had someone, and again, I don't, it's been a long time, I don't remember if it was her mother or if it was like a teacher or a trainer or like a, a physical therapist or something, but what they did was they took a brush of the bristles and not only did they brush her hair over and over and so it would massage her scalp, they would do it down her back and her arms and her palms and, and, and the bottom of her feet and all the way down her legs and they would do this over and over every day for years. And what this did was it slowly brought her out because now... See, she was stuck inside this one set of nerves and she couldn't pop out. And what this does, it pops you out. And now it's, it's, like, it's like only having one highway in a country. Now all of a sudden you have all these other highways and you have all these different highway connections to all these different freeways and highways and roads and side roads, etc. So now you have full access. 
Guess what? Deep breathing techniques do this too. Shaking your body out, stretching, yoga. All of this stuff gets you more physical. The more physical you become, the more connected you become. And the more connected you become, the more access you have to higher information. And thus, you have mental and emotional freedom. So I literally just gave you probably a half a dozen or more techniques on how you can access on a higher level. It's up to you to start employing them. It really is, okay? And if you want coaching on how to do this stuff much better, get a hold of me. Now, we're going to get to the techniques that I was talking about. Okay, so you got your problem? All right, so here's what I want you to do. All right, so I, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, so there's two different techniques we're going to use. I'm going to use the, I'm going to call it the four, four quadrant uh, technique. I don't think it's called that, but I forgot the name right now. So we're going to call it the four quadrant. It's a very basic mathematical equation. It's like, can you remember you got the quad, the four quadrants for math? It's like you got the, the line, got one horizontal, one crosses it in the middle. If it's, if it's a positive positive, it goes positive to the right and then goes up positive. If it's positive negative, it goes positive, it goes to the right and then goes down if, if it's a negative. So if it's five positive and three negative, it goes over five to the right and then negative down. If it's negative negative, then it goes down, which is negative, or no, it goes left and then it goes down. So now you're in that quadrant in the bottom uh, left, right? And if it's a positive negative, let's see, am I doing this right? Yeah, if it's a positive, no, if it's negative positive, then it goes over to the left and goes up, okay? So I think it's the four quadrants in math. Okay, so I actually kind of skipped over the Helen Keller. Do it real quick. So Helen Adams Keller was an American author, disability rights advocate, <clears throat> political activist, and lecturer born in West Tuscumbia, Alabama. She lost her sight and hearing after a bout of illness when she was 19 months old. So she was pretty much deaf and mute. And it goes on to talk about how she learned how to speak again, et cetera, et cetera, how she became an author. So she came out of it and became a tremendous person because someone aided her and understood the power of massage and using a brush to help her to access more of her neurology. All right, so a lot of people will assume like, oh, well, you know, Michael just does, does he doesn't understand, doesn't have any problems, blah, blah, blah. And they just assume I'm just this happy guy. Like, no. Okay, so David is my confidant. You guys have heard of David. I've mentioned him on here. And if you come to one of the workshops, he's more than likely going to be there because he helps set them up. So David's reconnected with me. He was a client of mine from years ago. I'd say six years ago, approximately. And we've reconnected in the last, I'd say, two months. And I was, you know, teaching him some stuff. And I go, well, he goes, and I go, well, David, like, well, you got to understand, like, you yourself have been been privy to watching me go through some stressful situations, some frustrations, some letdowns. I go, so you realize my life is not perfect and that I don't just float through life. He goes, yeah, you know, that's right. You were actually been pretty upset a couple times. I was like, yeah. I go, the difference is, is I have the tools on how to shift out of that or how to find solutions, how to move forward and not just get stuck in a, a specific state. So I was telling him about some of the tools that I taught him. I go, have you been practicing them? He's, well, they don't really seem to work. I go, it's because you haven't practiced them. Some of them you've got to practice every day for two or three weeks before you go, oh, okay, I got it. And at that point, it doesn't mean you have to do it every day. It's like, no, just do it when you want to. Or if you have a problem, now you can go to these tools that you've developed and boom, you can pop out of your stuck state. And I said, that's the only difference between me and other people. I know how to do it and I have the tools to do it. All right, here we go. So think of your problem. Okay, so here's an image of the four quadrants. All right, here we go. So I want you to think of what was your problem, okay? So now I'm going to ask you a question. Now here's the deal. If it, if it seems nonsensical, that's perfect. That means it's working. And obviously, if I can work with you in person, I can watch and hear and see where you're at so I will know when to adjust. So this just, but here, even then, this will still work for you. All right, so think of your problem or, or think of what was your problem, okay? All right, so here's my question. 
let's say you're like, oh, well, I can't do this or I can't do that or whatever. So I'm going to ask you this question. Well, what would, ha what would happen if you could? Or maybe for you, it would be what would happen if you did? So now what would happen if you didn't or what would happen if you couldn't? All right, so now, and you might be getting confused, like, wait, that doesn't make sense. That's a good sign. If you're getting confused on answering the question, trust me, that's a really good sign. Just go with it. All right, are you ready? Now, what would not happen if you could not do it? Or what would not happen if you did not do it? Or if it did not happen? Most people get really confused on this question, okay? Or the next one. So it's okay, and that's that's actually a really, that is the purpose. So what would not happen if you could not do it? Or what would not happen if it did not happen? Now, what would not happen if it did happen? What would not happen if you could do it? Or, or what would not happen if you did do it? What would happen if men did get it? <laughs> There'd be a lot of happy women out there. <laughs> All right, so let's do it with this. Why men just don't get it. So I already did the first one. What, what would happen if men did get it? And the obvious answer would pop up. Well, there'd be a lot of happy women out there. So let's take another, the, the next step. So what would happen if men did not get it? Well, you'd probably be frumpy and be like, well, that's where they're at right now. They don't get it. It pisses me off. So what would not happen if men did not get it? What would not happen if men did not get it or don't get it? Might get a little confused there, huh? <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. If you come to the workshop and you have like a problem, I'll run you I'll run you through this in front of the crowd. I'll do a couple people, two, three people, four people. We'll do five, I don't care, it doesn't matter. This is a really fun mind expanding process especially when it's done in person. All right, now let's do this one. So what would not happen if men did get it? What would not happen if men did get it? Well, you wouldn't have empty hearts, you wouldn't have broken relationships, you wouldn't have all these bad things, etc., etc. Now, at this point, depending on where you landed, I may take you through the quadrant again, starting at a different place, depending on your answer. So obviously, in person, <laughs> it's much more effective, but it's a really fun thing to do, and it really makes your brain go, wait, why does he think that what would not happen if it did not happen? Blah, blah, like, a lot of people have a lot of fun with this. All right, so we're going to go to the next technique, okay? And again, I'll do this with the whole class at the same time. This is a really fun technique. All right, so <clears throat> I want you to think of another problem. And if you have to pause this, go ahead. Think of another problem. Or if this problem is still kind of persistent, yeah, let's take this problem. Let's take it to the next level. All right, ready? So here we go. It's a really simple process. Okay, I, I'm going to ask you this question. So, for what purpose? Let's say you're like, oh, well, I'm sad or I can't do this. I'm going to say, for what purpose? What, and I'm going to say, what for, or, okay, I'm going to say, what's your highest purpose for doing this? You know, like for being depressed? Yeah, What what is a higher purpose? What's a higher purpose for being sad, being depressed, for being stuck? Now, here's the deal. I don't want you to logically think. I want you to just notice what answer comes up, even if it doesn't make sense. So once you get that answer, I'm going to ask this, 
what's your highest purpose for that? What's its highest purpose for that? And whatever floats up, allow it to come up and be like, well, I'd like freedom or I'd like to feel good. So the first one, well, what's the purpose for being sad? I don't know, because it, I'm upset about what's going on. It's like, okay, well, what's your highest purpose for that? Well, I'm upset and my highest purpose for that is I don't want to feel this way. I don't want this to happen anymore. Okay, so what's your highest purpose for that? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I go, well, if you don't feel this any, this sadness anymore, and if you don't have this problem anymore, what's your highest purpose now? Like, oh, well, I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel good about what I'm doing. Okay, so once you feel g good about what you're doing, what's your highest purpose for that? It's like, oh, well, just freedom of expression, freedom of movement, you know, freedom to make more money, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, well, so once you have freedom to make more money, freedom of expression, what's your highest, highest purpose for that? You're like... Well, just to feel happy and to feel alive and just to feel good about myself. So what? So once you feel happy and alive and you feel good about yourself, what's your highest purpose for that? Like just to feel content about life, just to feel good. So what we've done is equivalent to, to going up that mountain, going up and up and up and up and you're you're going out of the problem and all of a sudden now you can look all around going oh there's all these different answers and solutions so whenever you're like my pastor used to tell me uh the reason why he tills the garden because i'm like but there's no weeds he goes it doesn't matter he goes when i'm when i'm stuck on something mentally a problem he goes i have to till he goes that's my thing that's my process that's how i get out of you know get out of that stuck mental state and and he goes and answers start to come to me and it's the same thing when I go hiking, when I go up and up and up and up, and I'll sit them at the top looking all the way down, looking all the way across the bay or looking west towards the ocean and see these beautiful, I live in Marin County and we have beautiful, gorgeous mountains and hill, rolling hills and we have just lots of trees and green. It's just beautiful out here. So I notice when I'm cleaning or when I'm coming down the mountainside, and again, it's not that high. It takes me, but it's not actually a mountain. It's a pretty big, large hill. They call it California Rolling Hills. It's about 25, maybe 30 minutes to get to the top. No, I don't even think it's that, that long. On the way down, now here's what I noticed. Now, again, I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was just, I wanted to get, get out of my head. I was stressed, so I went for a walk. And, and I noticed when I come down the mountain, that's when the ideas and the thoughts start to kind of churn in my head because I'm just paying attention to the rocks and making sure I don't trip over the this or step in the creek or, you know, whatever, and to jump over the, this little tiny uh, water stream or mini creek that goes across. And all I notice is on the way down, I'm looking at the birds and the animals, but in the back of my mind, my brain is kind of mulling through all the options and possibilities that it opened up to. And all of a sudden I start getting really, really good answers. So let's say you can't walk, you're stuck in a wheelchair or in bed. Do it in your mind. Imagine floating all the way up or going, or remember a, 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 a big building that was like 20 or 30 stories tall or, or even 15 stories tall or a time when you walked up a trail that went all the way up and you could see the entire city, right? Imagine being there, associate into it and look down on the city and allow this process to happen on an unconscious level. So that one question where I said, for what purpose, what's your highest purpose, what's your highest purpose for that? Anytime you, you talk to someone, before you talk and say something, ask yourself, what's my purpose for sharing this? What's my higher purpose for that? So when you, when you get to an answer, okay, what's my highest purpose for that? And go up at least three, four, or five, I would say at least five levels. And all of a sudden, now you are more conscious of your intention, and then you begin to communicate in a much clearer way that they can understand you. So even if you have a problem, it's like, okay, well, what's my purpose for this problem? What's my highest purpose for that? What's my highest purpose for that? Well, what's my purpose for being sad right now? What's my purpose for being hurt? What's my purpose for whatever? I'm already starting to feel good just by walking, you know, through these questions. When I first came to this, I was actually pretty pissed off. I was frustrated and I thought, you know, I got to find a better, some music that sound makes me feel better. And I asked my, my a question, well, what's my purpose for doing this video? What's my intention? See, here's the deal. The reason why you have emotions is because it's a, it's a flag saying, hey, you've got something to learn here. So if you're really sad and you're really hurt, 
start asking yourself, well, what's my purpose for, for being so upset? Well, and then when you get an answer, well, because Jimmy punched me in the face, <laughs> you know, or so-and-so cheated on me. Well, what's, what's my purpose for feeling this bad? Well, because I don't like this feeling. Well, what's my highest purpose for that? And you'll start to pop out of it. See, your emotions have a higher purpose. They have an actual reason for being there. All of them the good and the bad. So asking this one question, what's my purpose or what's my highest purpose or what's my higher purpose for this? It begins to guide you out of the problem and into the possibilities where you can find solutions and answers. So stop complaining and start looking for solutions. I literally just gave you a tool or technically a series of tools from massage to stretching to deep breathing to brushing your hair, to massaging your scalp. I mean, and all the questions and answers for what purpose, what's my higher, highest purpose, what's my higher purpose. Even if you just take that one question, what is my higher purpose for this? What's my highest purpose? For this? If you just do that and repeat it three, four, five, six, seven times, all of a sudden you start to feel better. Your brain begins to expand and you start to notice answers and solutions. Be a solution oriented person and all of a sudden your life will start turning around. So here's the deal. I want you to do this with everything you do. If you do the dishes, what's my purpose for doing the dishes? Well, I want to clean things up. For what purpose? Well, so it'll be clean. Okay, so once it's clean, what's your highest purpose for that? Well, because then it'll make me feel better. Okay, so once you feel better, what's your highest purpose for that? Well, then I'll be more at peace and I'll be able to focus on my studies or blah, blah, blah. Now, I want you to do this before you talk to someone, before you say something, before you answer a question. Well, what's my purpose for this? What's my purpose for that? Go up three, four, five levels. I want you to do this with anything and everything for the next two weeks. Why? Because this will condition this habit into you and it'll be an automatic go-to. And remember, you can use this for anything. It's, a, it's an unbelievably super simple technique that is amazingly powerful that will change your life. It's up to you. Go ahead and do it. Now, you can do the four quadrants. Here's the first question. What would happen if I did? So it's would and did. That's positive, positive. Second one, what would happen if I didn't? Again, would and didn't. Third quadrant, negative, negative. What wouldn't happen if I didn't? Next one, what wouldn't happen if I did? So negative, positive. These are two very, very unbelievably simple techniques that anybody can do, even if you're in a wheelchair. These are just two techniques on how you can begin to take charge of your life and become a solution-oriented per person who begins to move in the direction that you desire in life. Plus, you got the brushing your entire body. You know, if you just brush your hair, like really use the bristles and brush and brush and brush, that alone will shift you mentally. Massage, deep massage, again, stretching, yoga, deep breathing, shaking your body out, shaking your head. All of this stuff shifts you mentally. You have a lot of tools in this one video. Hey, God bless you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, start taking charge of your life be by learning how to become a solution-oriented individual. Hey, if you guys have liked this video, if you've enjoyed this and learned something from it, go ahead and click subscribe, click the like button, make a comment, and if you want, go ahead and make a donation right down there in the description box below the video. There's a PayPal link and you can donate whatever you want. Thank you very much.